meet an expense. Open your Bible to Psalm 51 this morning. And right quick, I want to bring you a message here today um, that I believe uh, the Lord's put on my heart, and it's many of you, many of you. As a matter of fact, I would probably be disappointed if I knew how many need this message today. I want to preach this morning from Psalm 51 and verse 12. David said, you know this story, so I won't take time to tell it all. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. David, here in this psalm, was asking God, give me back my joy. I want to preach this morning on the subject, why the joy is missing. Why the joy is missing. Is missing. The joy of the Christian life is absolutely one of the, the greatest things that I've ever experienced outside of being saved, just getting saved. The joy of the Lord. All these little songs we sing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me joy, joy, joy. Those, those are not just words. There is such a thing as the joy of the Christian life. You know what's sad this morning? is a lot of people I'm looking at right now have traded in your joy for some cheap something of the world, and you're saved, but you don't have much joy anymore. And that's a shame. Why the joy is missing. Some of you, it's been a long time since you really felt the joy of the Lord. The average Christian has no idea. Now, there's a difference between joy and fun. You go, go to an amusement park and you have fun. Jo that's not joy. Joy don't come from outside uh, avenue. It comes from inside. Jesus said one time, when you believe on him, it'll be a well of water in you springing up into everlasting life. And only saved people know what I'm talking about, what I just now said. If you're saved, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's it bubbling. My, my girls used to sing that little song, it's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. I'm singing, I'm shouting, since Jesus made me whole. Some folks don't understand it, but I can't keep it quiet. It's bubbling, 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 day and night. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I want to give, give you four things this morning that I believe why the joy is missing. Please listen to me. Give me your attention, please. This will help you. Number one, why the joy is missing, we have left our first love. Now, I've been doing this a long time, since I was 18 years old, and one of the hardest things to do, just like in anything, is to keep your love hot and excited and on fire for God like it was when you were first saved. Amen? Same is true in your marriage. Same is true in your house. Same, you buy a new car, you, you're crazy over it at first, new house, and little by little the first love wears off. Now that can happen in your Christian life also. Now there's, uh, there's, there's no way to describe the joy that a young Christian has. You've heard me tell. I will never, ever forget. I'd been saved about three or four months. I'd just started going to church. I'd, I'd, I'd got saved, but I wasn't completely all the way where I need to be yet. Still ain't. And uh, I had this little old car. I uh, had a little MG, a little old two-seater. And I loved to drive that thing. It was like driving a go-kart. And I'd take the top off that thing. It really felt like it'd turn real quick like that. And I'd go around them curves coming down through Nebo just to flying down through there. And I'd been saved about three months. And I was going down, I'll never forget, I was on Highway 70 coming down from Nebo coming this way, and I was going down through them curves down through there, and all of a sudden, I started just thinking, and I started thinking, I'm saved now, and I'm going to heaven, and I'm not going to go to hell. I always used to think I'll wreck this thing one of these days and get killed, and that'll be the end of me, and it didn't happen. I didn't die and go to hell, and I thought, man, I'm going to heaven now. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I don't know how to explain this, but I can feel something. I like you're going to blow up. And all of a sudden, it started coming out my eyes. You know, that's what they say. The Lord rings your heart real good. And tear, tear. I started crying like that. Next thing I know, have you ever noticed when you really get right with God, you start going faster and faster? Have you ever noticed that? 
I try to tell them cops that, and they don't believe that. Uh, but uh, I, I, the, the, the more blessing I got, the, the heavier my foot got. And you better watch it. You get in trouble like that. I kept going faster. I'm saved. I'm saved. And I thought, hallelujah. And I was, I was going, Lord, bless some people. I didn't know how to pray. I prayed for every church coming down through. I might have prayed for Jehovah Witnesses. I don't know. I didn't know the difference. I mean, that's back in the good old days before you got all messed up in all this religion, you know. I don't pray for Jehovah Witnesses. But I'm, I'm telling you, buddy, I was going down there saying, Lord, bless them. Lord, bless that church. Lord, just bless everybody. Let everybody feel this. I'm telling you, I had the best time. I never, ever felt nothing like that before I got saved. Ever. It always had to be a movie or a ball game or a, or a race or a game or something to excite me. This come from down in here, driving down the road. That's the joy. I'm telling you, buddy, I thought, Lord, I don't ever want to lose that. I don't ever want to. Well, me and these boys, we used to sit around. That's just higher now. Down just higher. And I, we used to sit around, and when I first got saved, we looked for excuses. I wanted to go to the preacher's house. And he was he was a hundred years old. I thought then he really wasn't, but it seemed like he was. And I wanted to go to the preacher's house. I mean, you know, you know, you got it, brother, when you want to go to the preacher's house. And I, I wanted to go see the preacher uh, before if he came to the house, I'd go in the back room and say till he got gone. And I remember going over there to the preacher, and I'd say, preacher, what does this verse mean? Preacher, what does that verse mean? And it like every time he opened his mouth, just I mean, just wisdom. Uh, uh, and I loved it, and I loved it. So me and these boys, is 13, 14, 15, I was 18, some of us 19, 20, we all would sit around and we'd meet together on Monday night or Tuesday night and somebody would go say, see if you can get them to open my door. We would go in the church and sit. And we'd sit around in a circle, and we'd say, all right, we're going to study. And uh, everybody study for 15 minutes, and then we're all going to preach to each other. I mean, just a bunch of teenage boys. I mean, you know something happens when a bunch of teenage boys get together on their own, on their own time, and just sit around and read the Bible and talk about it, buddy. I mean, we got it, people. We got it. I hope you got it like I got it. Amen. I hope you got it like I got it. I'm telling you, I got it. And we sit around like that, and we'd study, and it's study, and it's all right. What'd you learn? What'd you learn? What'd you learn? Lord, you never heard such doctrine in all of your days. I'm telling you what, you know, I'm glad God looked. You know, God will, God will uh, if you get your heart right, God will straighten out the kinks in your head. And, you know, a lot of people got their heart, their head right. They got their doctrine straight. They know which Bible's right. They got all their conviction to believe. And their heart is cold as a block of ice. And, buddy, my heart was right. Our head wasn't exactly right, but, man, my heart was. Lord, we preached it. Noah stayed in the ark seven days before it started raining. Uh, we preached it. Uh, uh, we, somebody come across that verse over there that said in Deuteronomy where they destroyed all their idols and all their pictures. And when they said that word pictures, we all looked and said, Oh, no. We're sinning. We got to take all. We want to go to the house and take all the pictures down off of the wall. And I was talking about idols and words, of course. And I said, "Get rid of the pictures. What am I going to do with my driver's license?" I mean, we, I mean, uh, I mean, we destroy all them pictures. Bless God. I mean, we. I mean, we were a little bit messed up in the head, but I'm telling you what, our heart was right. You know, John Wesley wasn't all completely right on his doctrine, and a lot of them guys, but they had God on them and they had the joy of the Lord. And I fear today that we get our head all right, and we know everybody's wrong but us, and we know we're right and everybody else is wrong, and we know you're better than everybody. We know all that. We've heard of you self-righteous independent Baptists brag about that for years. But I'm telling you something, there ain't nothing like your heart being right. Your heart being right. Your heart being right. And our heart was right. I'm telling you, we had the awfulest time ever was. I tell you, we preached, we sat around, we cried. I mean, we found new doctrine that nobody had ever, I, nobody had ever discovered the great truths that, that we come out with in the Bible. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm ashamed to tell you, I, I, crazy stuff. I tried to raise people from the dead and everything else. I said, it's in the Bible. I'm, I ain't going to tell you I haven't, but I did. I, did. I said, there it is in the Bible, glory to God. I'm going to do it. i tell you one thing. I was happy, and I had joy, and I don't know what you've let cheat you out of your joy this morning, but I'm telling you, you're missing a big part of life. Get your joy back. Amen. Get your joy back. I'm telling you, you've left your first love. Number two, you know why the joy is missing? Number one, we've left the first love. Number two, we've left our family life. We've left our family life. One of the greatest joys in life, and especially the Christian life, is to be a, 
apart and have a family. I feel sorry for these people that grow up and you hear them on, these guys get on these talk shows and on TV or something and they'll say, man, I ain't never getting married. I don't want to get tied down. I want to go to party and I want to go. Well, check back with them old boys when they get up in their 40s and their 50s and they ain't got no wife, no kids, no family. They ain't, that ain't the way to be happy. They're so selfish. They're, those people are so selfish. You ever met anybody like that? I don't want no family. I want to be free. I want to date whoever I want to date. I want to do whatever I want to do. That's a perfect example of a selfish selfish person and you'll never be happy being selfish I'm telling you there ain't nothing in this world God designed us to have a family God designed us to be with family look at the animal world dogs bunch of little dogs go with chicken bunch of little chickens go with her I mean it's, it's inside of us it's instinct and it's human nature to want to be a part of a family ah Lord have mercy and there's nothing in the world like family and even though you may not have any physical, biological, mother or dad or child, you can still be a part of a family and family time. and family. That's why I like to go to church. I like to go to church. I don't, I don't think people say, why do we have to go to church? There's something wrong with your head, buddy. I like to go to church. I like seeing my family. I like seeing my brothers and sisters. I've enjoyed being here today. All right, I'm enjoying being here today. Even though I've had one headache right after another when I walked in that door this morning. Y'all wouldn't believe it. Just one thing right after another. But it's still good to be with family. Amen. We get together with our family. They're all about, I think they're all here this morning. My girls over there and their uh, husbands and grandkids and wife and everybody's here this morning. We get together on Sunday evening and we eat a meal and um, we, we, uh, uh, we all get together like that and every time and, and every once in a while one of the girls will say, Daddy, you're going with us, ain't you? Daddy, you're going. This is our family time. There's just something about being with the family. Don't turn against your family. Don't run off and leave your family. Stick in there. Serve God. Live for the Lord. I know, I know. Sometimes it happens and ain't nothing you can do about it. But Lord have mercy, people. I just be in there and stay in there. You, you, you're supposed to say for better, for worse, and for good. Ain't that right? That's what it's supposed to be. For better, for worse, and for good. And if somebody's deserted you and you can't help it, I ain't fussing at you. That happened. I'm not fussing at you. But hang in there and stick with your family and God will bless you for it. I know, men are selfish, men, women are bossy. See, you liked it the first part, didn't you? And then you thought I was sexist when I said women are bossy. Well, I can say a whole bunch of other stuff, too, you ain't going to lie. I heard about this guy going down the road, and he said, he's driving down the road like that. Like that and all of a sudden, a uh, cop stopped and he said, Hey, man, did you know your wife fell out down there about 10 miles down the road? He said, Thank God. I thought I'd gone deaf. That's a perfect example of men and women. Selfish old sorry man and women won't hush fussing at him all the time. I like that for stereotyping. Hey, <laughs> I ain't always like that, but I mean, it's a joke. You can laugh. I'm telling you, brother, we've left our family life. Family life. Them kids. I know sometimes they can get on your last nerve. Amen, mamas? Sometimes, I know, I had three, had three girls, I mean, this coming up, and they can, I can imagine, that sister back there, Lord have mercy, God, I don't know telling what she goes through with five, and, and Chanel, uh, I, and some of y'all in here, a bunch of kids, but you know what, you wouldn't trade them for nothing, would you? You know, when you have that one kid, you think that all you love in them, then when another one comes, you think, could I ever love them as much, yes, and then another one comes, could I ever love them, yes, it's a different love for every single one of them, Amen. And his dots got nine, eight, eight right there, and loved every one of them. Still alive. Raised eight kids. And all them grandkids, there's a hundred of them. And I'm telling you, you wouldn't take nothing in the world for your family, would you? If you're about that man and woman, their kids went off to camp, and they finally let them go to camp. They hadn't never let them go nowhere. And they were sitting at the kitchen table, and the wife looked over and said, I sort of miss them, don't you? He said, yeah, why don't you spill that milk on my pants and rub some jelly in my hair? <laughs> said, that's a breakfast table. That's the way they are. <laughs> I tell you, they ain't nothing like having a family, amen. They ain't nothing like having to, spending time together, eating together. Uh, people say you're crazy for getting married. Don't you listen to them. It's God's plan. It's God's plan. Have some family time once in a while. That's going to miss your joy. If all you do 
is you want to go play golf or you want to go play, uh, uh, or you want to go to the uh, Tupperware party or you want to go here, or you want to go there, and you, 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 your, your, your joy ain't going to last. You, you've left your family time and your life. The Bible talks about training a child. The Bible talks about all them old songs like, I'll be home for Christmas. I'll be, it's, it's special. There's no place in the world like being at home with your family. Number three, what am I going to say next? You know why the joy is missing for some of you? You've left your first love. Number two, you've left your family life. Number three, you've left your faithful labors. That job that you used to do for God. When you used to work in the work of the Lord, and then you grew out of it. One man told me, he said, my wife's 50. She can't do a bus route no more. I thought, good night, 50. You just should be getting started good. It's funny. I'm telling you, we get 40 years old to do, to old do anything for God. Listen, we have left our faithful labors. I'll never forget. Again, illustration, my own personal life. This man I knew, he, he was a good man, good man. Uh, up, up in Marion, he, he met together. He said, let's go visit. And I said, okay, I ain't never been visiting before. We started on Saturday morning about 10 o'clock. We had some tracks, me and him, and he, he, he would knock on the door. He'd witness the people, and I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to try it because I had never done that, and I got a few words in here and there. I'd give him a track, and, and we went door to door, down one street after another, one street after another, one street after another, and uh, about 12 o'clock, I thought we was done. About 12 o'clock, he said, you want to go get a sandwich? I said, sure. We went and ate a sandwich. Come, came back. He went down another street. We went out again. One o'clock, two o'clock. And I started saying, good night. How long are we going to do this? And I was having fun. I mean, we was getting to witness to people, but it was like it was like work, you know. I mean, uh, it was hot. And we was out there witnessing and everything. And I went home that day. And that night, I went to church. They was having a revival, singing thing over yonder, one of them churches. And I went in there that night. And I sat down that night, and that place was packed full, and people started singing. And I'm going to tell you something. That was the first time that I ever just really just let go and took a shouting spell in church. It started bubbling up in me, bubbling up in me. I started again. I'm not going to hell. I'm not going to hell. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. And next thing I know, I was sitting right here. I stood up and raised my hand. I didn't do it to show off. I didn't even. I stood up and throwed up my hands. And I said, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to burn in hell. I'm not going to burn in hell. And I was crying. Next thing I know, the other people were shouting, going to the altar. And God, and I got to thinking, what caused that? What caused that? You know what? That's the fruit of those labor of being busy for the Lord. Listen, if I'd have just went and played ball all day, it wouldn't have been a sin, but there's just nothing in the world like laboring in the work of the Lord. People, if you would understand, that's what happened to some of your joy. You used to do stuff for God. You used to give out tracts. You used to testify and witness at work. Now you just completely quit, and you have no joy. You've left your faithful labors. Uh, the best times I've ever had at church, best, best fun I've ever had was at church. The, some of the funniest things can happen in church, not even on purpose, and you're in the work of the Lord. Hey, 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 have you ever went to church and it was real good and then went home saying, I wish I hadn't went? I, no, no, you're always glad you go. But if you stayed at home late in the bed this morning, about 3 o'clock you should have said, I should have got up and went. That's where your joy's gone. That's where your joy's gone. I'll never forget one time we was up there. He, he mentioned that the church of Marion was in an old building. And I mean, it wasn't very old at all. We had that big old building. And I mean, there's junk and trees and junk. One night, me and these boys up there, I was 20, maybe 24 years old. Maybe. Maybe 23. And uh, we were sitting around there and we, burnt, we was burnt, burning a big trash pile. And we had side doors, like two doors, like that, right over there like that. And uh, we were standing outside in the parking lot, and we were standing around out there talking, burning that trash and everything. And all of a sudden, out of that trash pile come this big old rat about that long, and somebody said, get it! And they tried to get it like that, and they couldn't get it, and it run into church. And it run into church down there, and I said, Lord, have mercy. We went in there and turned the lights on, couldn't find it, looked around, couldn't find it. Where is that stupid thing? I said, now, well, we don't want no rats in here. And uh, we couldn't find it, couldn't find it. Looked all over, turned the lights on, and he was nowhere to be found. 
I mean, we just had old, old wood floor, and the alder didn't, was just plywood like this. It had some old carpet on it. There's holes everywhere. I thought, good night. We'll never find that stupid thing. We said, I, I tell you what, let's do. I remember telling him, I said, leave the doors open tonight. Ain't, no, ain't nothing in there nobody wants to steal. I said, maybe he'll run out, you know, tonight, and we'll be rid of him. And one of them said, jokes said, <laughs> hey, preacher, wouldn't it be funny if he come out and change? Yeah, we all laughed. We all, yeah, that'd be funny. Ha, ha, ha. Well, guess what? The devil led him. The devil led Brother Rat, as he come to be known after this, after this incident. He, he had, 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 had got in the nursery. I guess there's cookie crumbs and stuff back there. And he found him something to eat, and he stayed in that nursery the rest of that week. Sunday morning. I, the dignified downtown reverend, trying a new church, people growing by leaps and bounds, people getting saved right and left, was up preaching, right in the middle of preaching. I kid you not, in the middle of preaching, Brother Rat, it got, got too hot for him back there in the nursery. Couldn't take it no more. I guess one of them kids... Uh, uh, Brother Rat come running right out of the nursery, across the floor, across the aisle, and down the side aisle, right in the middle of preaching. And it was like, it, it, when you come down the aisle like this, somebody went, woo! Somebody went, woo! Somebody went, woo! Somebody went, woo! Shouting all the way down that aisle like that right there. And at first I thought, man, I'm doing good. Uh, these people are shouting this morning. Woo! And then I saw it go, vroom, and run right under the altar run in a hole up under the altar about right here. I tried to act like everybody was life. I seen shoulders just doing this all over the church. I said, pay attention. I'm up there preaching. And I thought, this is stupid. I might as well just, I might as well just, deal. I mean, who's going to come to the altar? You're going you gonna to come up here and close your eyes and put your face down there? <laughs> That's a thing coming out eating your fingernails. I said, Ah, whatever. And I finished a little bit, and we went home. You know what? I, 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 I like good old times like that. Sometimes you just have, sometimes stuff like that. Listen, there's nothing. Listen to me. I, I'm, not against, I'm not against you playing golf. Ball. I like basketball. I, ain't nothing wrong with it for exercise, but that ain't where I get my joy. I get my joy in the Lord and in His house and in His work. We, we visited yesterday. What a blessing it was. You know why some of you have lost your joy? Because you've left your faithful labors. Used to serve God. Used to get on fire for God. You quit your reading. You quit your praying. You quit your witness, witnessing. You quit your bus route. You quit your giving. You quit your faithfulness. That's why. And then they turn right around and say, well, I just don't know what's wrong with the church. It ain't like it used to be. That ain't it. That ain't it. God's still God. Brother Danny's still Brother Danny. The Holy Ghost is still real. The Word of God ain't changed. Mandela effects of the devil. Hallelujah. The Word of God's still true. It's still real. You can have the joy of the Lord. Get back in His will and in His service. Don't, don't let this cheat you out of, your, out of your joy. I couldn't tell you the preachers that I've talked to have quit. They got messed up, got discouraged, got, fell into sin, something happened, and they quit. And they said, Brother Danny, here's what they ever want them to say. I'm miserable. I'm miserable. I couldn't tell you how many times I've heard that. And it's all because they left the work. You, you think, you think, well, I've got some money. I'm going to be free. I'm going to do what I want to do. And it don't make you happy. It's a big disappointment. If you'll admit it, the happiest you ever was in your life when you was doing something for God and serving the Lord and doing His will for your life. Amen? Amen. That's right. I'll say this, I'm through. Well, D.L. Moody said one time, he said it was a great day in his life when it dawned on him that the world was like a sinking ship and it was his job to try to get everybody in the lifeboat he possibly could get. And he said there is nothing like it. He said it's joyful to serve the Lord with eternity's values. Thinking of eternity. Number four, and I'm through. What I say? I said, you've lost your joy because you left your first love. I said, you've lost your joy because you left your family life. I said, you've lost your joy because you've left your faithful labors. Finally, you've lost your joy because you've left your future look. Your future look. Do you know looking for the Lord to come 
will bring joy to your heart. You know what's wrong with a lot of people? They thought, I know people that was sure the Lord was going to come and Y2K. Remember all that Y2K stuff? Was y'all, I hope most of y'all would say, Lord in mercy, what a big disappointment. Everybody said the Lord, people wrote books, they were storing up water, they said you better, uh, planes was going to fall out of the sky, computers going, oh Lord, we thought, oh, Jesus is coming. We had, we had, we had CNN cable piped into the church so we could watch the world blow up. Well, I was having a watch night service. And, uh, and we said, oh, Lord, uh, Jesus has come. The wrath of God is going to fall on the world. Buildings are going to crash. And people things are going to blow up. And the computers are going to shut down. People won't have a job. Ships will, will, will sink. I mean, people will wreck. Buses, uh, everything's going to quit. And 10, 9, 8, 7, and nothing happened. I hate to tell you this, but I, was mad. I wanted something awful to happen. That's how disappointed I was. That's bad, ain't it? And then a lot of people said, well, thought he was coming in 1993, and he didn't. Thought he was coming in 2000, and he didn't. Here we are 2016. Maybe they just, and you've lost your hope. What is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye at the presence of God, at his kingdom and his appearing, and the Lord's coming? I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, you'll lose your joy when you quit looking for Jesus to come. The coming of the Lord is imminent. That means it could happen at any second. That means it could come right now. I know there's some crazy preachers that don't believe that no more, but I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the word of the Lord is true. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you, you remember when you looked for him every day? You remember when you, you'd drive to work saying, What a beautiful day for the Lord to come again. Now you turn on country music and say, I'm stuck in Marion. I'm stuck in Backdale. I'm stuck in Burke County. If that ain't it, they'll write one yet. I could make money right now. And feeling sorry for yourself so you can go home and drink a beer. I, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, I, what about the up oh, look and look up and say, Glory to God, He could come in any minute and snatch us out of here. I'm, one will be taken, the other shall be left. The Lord's coming. He's coming. And I don't want to get cheated out of my joy of looking for Jesus to come. You say, Well, what if He don't come today? He might come tomorrow. He might come before I get through, like that. Well, what would you do then, buddy? I mean, some of you sitting here all by your lonesome. I mean, you'd be in bad shape then, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd be in trouble then. I hope you've not lost the joy of looking for the coming of the Lord. said one time, the principal came in this schoolroom. said, all right, boys and girls, I'm going to inspect your desk. He said, I'm going to go out and do some work. I'm going to come back here in a little bit. And whoever what got the cleanest desk is going to get a big prize turned around and walked out. And this one little girl, boy, she was noted for having the messiest desk in the class. She straightened up her books and she put them up under there and she got to her trash in the trash can. She put her pencils and erasers up here. She had everything there and they said, what are you doing? She said, I'm going to win that prize. And they said, well, what if you don't come back at lunchtime? It'll be all messy again. And she said, right before lunch, I'm going to straighten up my books, put my pencils and erasers up here and and." fix everything nice, put my trash in the trash can, and I'll be ready if he comes at lunch. They said, what if he comes at fifth period, about 2 o'clock? She said, ugh. I started trying to, I'll throw all my trash in the trash can, keep my pencils here, and I'll put my books over here and stack them up, and I'll be ready if he comes at 2 o'clock. And they said, well, what if he don't come till 3 o'clock? And she looked around and said, ugh. I'll just keep it clean. That's what you got to do. See, there's some of you this morning, you'd be in pretty good shape if the Lord come back today. But whew, what if you'd have come back Friday night? You know what you need to do? Keep it clean. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. Keep it clean. Because you don't know when he's coming. You know, you, you know how you know you'd be ready? Keep it clean. If you get dirty, wash it off the blood of Jesus, put it under the blood, and lay it down. Keep your joy. You can have joy if you'll drive home looking for him to come. I read about Queen Victoria. This is the queen, y'all. Very powerful, important lady. 
And they said one time she went and heard a preacher. And while he was preaching, she was visibly, physically moved, shaken, tears, intense concentration on what that preacher said. And the queen asked to see the preacher after it was over. And the preacher comes and said, tears were coming down her face. Emotions, her emotions were showing. And he said, Queen, may I ask why you're so emotionally tore up? Because he preached on Jesus coming back. And she said, When I heard you speak about the world's rightful king that is soon coming, it made me want to see him so bad. And when I do, I want to take this crown and throw it at his feet. And buddy, I'll tell you what she realized. She said, one day, the real king is going to come and straighten this mess out, folks. It's coming. Don't lose that hope or you'll lose your joy. I believe it, don't you? I don't believe it. And our two presidential candidates, worse and worser, are going to solve our problems. Amen. I'm going, to write a, I'm going to write a song, sing it for election day, maybe. Worse and worse, sir. I don't, you know what's going to happen one day? The true king is coming back, and he's going to straighten this mess out. That's how I can have joy. Why is the joy missing in your life? What are you getting cheat? What are you cheating? What's cheating you out of your joy? Think about it. Remember how happy you used to be? Now you look like you're about to die when you walk in church. What's cheating you out of your joy? Let's fix it this morning. Stand with your heads bowed, please.